Grand Avenue would also be a hub for illegal activity during the Prohibition era. As alcohol went underground, controversies over laxed enforcement of laws against drinking, gambling, and other activities would take center stage in the city's political drama of the day. South San Francisco was sort of a bustling town for uh, uh, people who want to bootleg. One of the federal agents at the time, he deemed South San Francisco as probably the worst uh, city in California for prohibition. How are you going to stop it? Everybody, just about everybody in town had a still. What are you going to do, arrest the whole town? Under the Metropolitan Hotel, this used to be a speakeasy where they had, you know, parties and gambling and whatever. They had a stage, they had all the sparkly ceiling, and they had a, a, a what appeared to be an opening that would go in, under the street to a tunnel. What they had was a draw that went up to a small office in a mezzanine area above Marie's restaurant where money would be put into this little elevator shaft, sent upstairs where it would be counted, and then after people left at night, or when it was safer, it would come back down and somebody would walk it under the end of the tunnel across the street to the Bank of South San Francisco where they would make their deposit. Well, you have the hotels, you had the bars, you had the gambling, and having a racetrack down in Tan Fran and a racetrack that came into Baden did not help quell the crime that existed on the peninsula. It, was, it became quite a colorful time. We had a sheriff, McGrath, big fat guy, uh, great guy, jolly fuller, like a drink and like to eat. He, he'd have one philosophy. Long as the local is running the card room or the bookie or whatever it is, keep it on a local business and keep it small. Don't worry about me. So that give the, the uh, police department pretty much full control. Louis Bologna, who was the chief of police at the time, and, and my mom and dad were very close friends. I remember one time Louis saying, when the feds were gonna come in to raid a place during Prohibition, we would call up the bar owner and let him know, okay, Joe, your place is getting raided tonight, so make sure you have a couple of bottles, get everything out of there, and you know, make sure there's a couple of bottles hanging around so that they'll take them after they go, then you know, business as usual. Needless to say that a majority of the council didn't care for the chief for one reason or another. And as a result, they wanted the chief out. And they did get rid of him. They said, hey, you're fired because you're not enforcing the laws on prohibition. A lot of pressure came on. Uh, Portuguese and Italian were uh, the vast majority of the town back then. And they all liked the chief, so a lot of pressure came on. So they reinstated him and said, you have 10 days to clean everything up which was an impossible task and everybody knew it. Well, the Italian American Club got involved in it. Uh, a lot of people who really liked the chief because he had done a lot for them, uh, started getting behind him and started recall for the council members. And they did the best they can to try to avoid that recall, uh, but they were unsuccessful. Uh, the chief was reinstated and held that position probably for 40 more years after that. The town would weather the stock market crash and the Great Depression. As America became drawn into World War II, South San Francisco's steel and heavy production industries began cranking out ships for the war effort. By July of 1944, nearly 16,000 men and women were employed in the shipyards, all playing a role in the country's victory. At that time, everybody was very patriotic, and there were a lot of the young boys, some of them even left school and didn't graduate from high school, went down to enlist. My brother graduated on a Friday night, and he went register for the Navy on Monday, the following week. 
It, it was, uh, the kids didn't uh, have any problem. It was accepted that this is what we had to pay for the freedom of the United States. I participated in the hospitality house. I was there almost every night. And uh, we used to uh, have the uh, fellows from the uh, Cow Palace who were waiting to be shipped out to the Pacific. And uh, they would come down in the trucks and we'd get the call from um, uh, Cliffy's committee to come because <laughs> we were getting a big load of fellows. And uh, so we'd go down there and dance our feet off. <laughs>